Jamaica baby, they made me to be the greatest Serving the deed of my creators Fresh off of my high haters It's the king again, Magdalene, Sofit bragging and boasting Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy Dollars. Welcome back to the channel. It's another day, another dollar video, and I'm going to be reacting to 12 reasons why the Egypt pyramids terrify scientists. I ain't going to lie. They kind of scare me, too. You know, over the years, I've heard a lot of different things about the pyramids. I've heard that, you know, the pyramids underneath the pyramids, there's cities or there's like this ancient technology and all this crazy things. But yeah, the pyramids kind of terrify me, especially the fact that, you know, they don't know how them things got there. People believe that, you know, these, um, yeah, I call them aliens. I consider them fallen angels. You know, the Bible talks about these things. They're not the aliens you think they are. They were fallen angels that helped these people do these things and gave them, you know, technology. Who you think gave us technology, bro? But listen, man, that's neither here nor there. Without further ado, let's check this one out. The pyramids of Egypt are the most famous ancient monuments in the world. They're the last of the seven wonders of the ancient world that are still standing and some of the most visited tourist attractions in the world. Despite that, there are still so many mysteries about them that they're yet to get to the bottom of. Bring them Let's on. Let's talk about them. Go ahead. Let's start today off by talking about temperatures. Whenever the technology used by archaeologists advances, someone always returns to the pyramids to see if that technology leads to any breakthroughs. In 2015, an international team of scientists and architects conducted a joint survey of the pyramids of Giza and identified thermal anomalies deep inside the structures. Hmm. Higher than expected temperatures were recorded in three adjacent stones in an impossible to reach area at the very bottom of the Great Pyramid. Although empty spaces, different building materials, and internal air currents have all been suggested as possible causes for the anomalies, nobody's able to say for sure. That don't make sense. Further no? anomalies were detected in the Great Pyramid's upper half. The discovery came when the research team used infrared thermography to scan the pyramids as they heated up during sunrise and then again when the sun went down and the limestone cooled. Hmm. It's a virtual certainty that there are rooms and chambers inside the pyramids that we haven't yet been able to reach. Wow. But why would those chambers be warmer than the structure around them? Hmm. Unfortunately, it might be several years before we find out. Do they have like traps in those pyramids? Like why can't they reach those rooms, man? I know they don't want to destroy anything and, you know, that's like history. But listen, man, in the progress of science, why don't they just drill a hole through them freaking walls or something and try to see what's in those rooms but maybe you don't want to see what's in those rooms that should actually you're releasing something you know into this world but here's a question mm, that occurs to many people who've studied the, the great egyptian artworks stuff. and monuments of the ancient past hmm. how did they cut through massive heavy thick stones and rocks with seemingly the same level of ease as we can cut through butter today with lasers the largest construction companies in the world would struggle to replicate Egypt's great monuments. Exactly. Yet we're asked to believe that the ancient Egyptians created them with nothing more than basic hand tools. You, you, the things that people don't realize, bro, there was a lot of technology that you think all this shit is new, bro, but they had these things back then, bro. They had a computer back then in these days. I know it sounds wild. Look it up, bro. There was a computer back in those days, bro. And y'all don't think I'm tweaking. All right. We're not so Just sure do the research. That. We think they may have had powerful saws. The most obvious sign of that comes in the form of the granite sarcophagus inside the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The marks on the bottom of the box could only have been made by a saw. Hmm. And it would have had to have been a very large saw, too. We can't say for sure what kind or laser? of teeth the saw might have had, but there's little disputing the clear evidence that a saw was used. Hmm. What happened to the stone cutting technology of the ancient Egyptians? And why have we never found any modern trace of it? <laughs> we could make this whole video about the mysteries of the Great Pyramid of Giza and- Also, wasn't the capstone or the stone that's at the very top of the pyramid supposed to be pure gold or something and they're missing? Like, where did those go? Egypt if we wanted to. See, look, it's Four pure gold years if old, you look at these pictures. And we still don't truly understand how it was even built. That alone would make it worthy of inclusion here, 
But there's another mystery about the pyramid that only came to light in 2017. Using sophisticated scanning technology, archaeologists have identified two large voids inside the structure of the pyramid, and they have no idea what's hiding inside them. Hmm. They might be nothing more than service tunnels used during the construction of the building, or they could contain undiscovered tombs. Hmm. One of the voids is 100 feet long and appears to be roughly the same shape as the Grand Gallery, which is directly below it. It's possible that it may have been included in the design to reduce the weight of the rock above the Grand Gallery and prevent it from collapsing. But it'd be nice to find out for sure. The voids don't appear to have any passages leading to them directly, so reaching them won't be easy. Scientists are now in the process of designing new tunneling robots to help them with the job. I would like an update then, man. We've just described the Great Pyramid of Giza as 4,500 years old. But how sure of that can we really be? Mainstream historians say that the Giza pyramids were built in 85 years, between 2589 and 2504 BCE. But that might not be correct. The estimate comes from radiocarbon dating tests carried out on material from in and around the pyramids in 1984. We didn't know as much about radiocarbon dating back then as we do now. Further set of tests carried out in 1994 and 1995 indicated that the 1984 estimates might be off more than two centuries, making the pyramids 200 years younger. This is significant because it means that the pyramid of Senwasrit II wasn't built until around a century after his death. There's another problem here, and that's the fact that radiocarbon dates are often obtained from wood, and the Egyptians had a habit of reusing wood repeatedly. The wood sampled from in and around the pyramids may already have been old by the time it was used there. Hmm. History books will still tell you that 4,500 years is about the right age for the pyramids, but it could just as easily be closer to 4,000. Okay. We've already discussed the idea that there are voids and anomalies in the Great Pyramids of Giza. Here's the clearest evidence yet that those voids might be secret chambers. In September 2020, explorers identified two secret doors hidden inside the pyramid. They're at the end of a pair of narrow tunnels that extend from the north and south walls of the Queen's Chamber inside the pyramid, then stop at stone blocks before they reach the outer walls. Open them. There isn't enough space in the tunnels for a human to explore them, but a robot called Webwawat was sent into the space and obtained pictures of a small stone door with what appear to be two copper handles attached to it. Open it! The same robot also took pictures of faint red hieroglyphs painted onto the walls. The hieroglyphs are rough, almost like graffiti, so it's possible they're guide marks left behind by the stonemasons who built the pyramids. These shafts can have been used for ventilation because they don't open up to the exterior of the pyramid, but they're surely too small for humans to have been expected to navigate them. So how they got it open? How they Building built a it, door though. implies that there's something worth protecting behind it, though. Hmm. What could it be? Protecting or keeping out? Or keeping from getting out? Hmm. Here's an idea that you've probably heard before. In fact, it's an idea that's been repeated so many times that people believe it to be true, even though the evidence upon which it's based is tenuous at best. They align with the stars? In the 1980s, Egyptologist Robert Bavel claimed that the three pyramids of the Giza complex are perfectly aligned with the stars to make up the belt of the constellation of Orion in I've the night sky. I've heard that before, too. He followed this up with a book called The Orion Mystery, which he released in 1995. Hmm. The book became a New York Times bestseller, and the idea took root in people's minds. The problem is that the whole concept is a little dishonest. You can't make the pyramids line up with Orion's belt unless you invert one or the other. Surely, if the Egyptians intended to reflect the position of the stars, they'd have arranged them in a way that didn't necessitate this inversion. Secondly, the three pyramids weren't all built at the same time. There's no evidence to suggest the third pyramid was planned when the first was built. Thirdly, the positions of stars in the sky change over thousands of years. The stars in Orion's belt don't look the same now as they would have 4,500 years ago. Are they aligned or not, though, As bro, impressive that's what as the matters. pyramids look today, they looked far more impressive when they were first built. After standing exposed to the elements for over 4,000 years, 
Their exterior surfaces are a little rough and lumpy. Damn, imagine how they look when they were built, bro, in the beginning. That must have been a beautiful sight. When they were first completed, they had stunningly shining, glistening facades that would have made them appear almost as if they were made of glass. Damn, imagine seeing that from, from far away, bro. That would have been a beautiful sight to behold. According to Jacqueline Williamson, an Egyptologist from Harvard University, the casing stones that made up the external facades of the pyramids were polished to a high degree using abrasive materials like fine sand, sandstone, and even brick to produce a smooth finish. During the peak of the day, when the sun was high in the sky, they would almost have seemed to glow. Williamson is 100% certain about her findings and insists that the time, effort, and precision involved in the polishing process means that the quality of the craftspeople who worked on the pyramids was even greater than we've always imagined it to be. Um, of course. As for what happened to these shiny facades, they've naturally fit. They probably would have been the better freaking construction workers than we are today. ...dated and crumbled over time. But some of the casing stones were removed long ago to be used in other building projects, thus accelerating the decline. Hmm. We know from Egyptian historical records that the Benben -Ben stone was supposed to have supernatural qualities. It was once found in the Temple of Ra at Heliopolis and was the first place that the rays of the sun struck every morning. This is the tip, right? The original Pause. stone is long lost, but it influenced the design of several sculptures and statues that still exist in Egypt today, including the capstones of the famous pyramids. The stone is thought to have symbolized the phoenix, an important creature in Egyptian mythology because of its ability to survive death and return to the living. Some historians believe that Ben Ben represents the seed of the phoenix on the account of the fact that it's been loosely translated as fertilization in the language used at the time the Temple of Ra was built thousands of years ago. One legend says that the Ben Ben was the mound that rose from the waters of Nu when the great god Atum created the world. If you've ever heard references to the Stone of Destiny in folklore, they were references to this mm. mystical stone. I never heard nothing about this before. I heard you about the capstones. You are not allowed to climb the pyramids today, but in the late 19th century, there were no such rules. British inventor and explorer Sir William Siemens decided to climb to the summit of the Great Pyramid. I ain't gonna lie, I would have been too scared to climb that. Even if you could climb it, like, I don't know, bro. That just seems like bad luck, bad juju to climb that shit. When he got there, he was concerned about a prickling sensation emanating from the tips of his fingers and spreading through his hands. Mm. A few moments later, he took a sip of celebratory wine from a metal cup and received an electric shock the instant his lips touched the rim. Mm. Ever since then, there have been rumors that the pyramid somehow generates energy. Mm -hmm, I heard that does, too. We might know how. There are water channels beneath the Giza Plateau through which water flows in high volumes. The flow generates physioelectricity, which might then be channeled up through the pyramid to the tip. Many fringe theorists have suggested that the pyramids were actually power plants. Hmm. But as far as we know, the Egyptians knew nothing about electricity. It's hard to imagine that they could have pretty sure they did know about electricity, bro. Plan to channel physioelectricity through their mighty monument, even if they understood that there was a power source there. But it's odd that the system seems to work so well. They probably didn't know how to use it or what it could be used for, but Speaking they, they know about it. Speaking of strange theories about the pyramids, if you remember the U.S. presidential elections of 2016, you might recall that Ben Carson stood as a candidate for the Republicans. Carson espoused a bizarre theory that the pyramids were nothing more than enormous grain stores. Not only that, he believes the pyramids were built by Joseph, as in the biblical figure. Hmm? Carson is a Christian religious fundamentalist with some pretty weird ideas about a lot of things, but he's way off the mark with this one. I'm Christian too. I never heard that theory. His interpretation comes from a passage in Genesis that says, God told Joseph to gather up all the food of the good years to come and lay up corn under the hand of the Pharaoh, letting him keep food in the cities. Hmm. Note the plural. That's cities, not city. For this interpretation to be literal, there would need to be far more pyramids in far more cities. More to the point, no trace of grain has ever been found inside any of the pyramids. 
and it's impossible for this to be the case if the buildings had been full of grain supplies. As a final nail in the coffin, the internal dimensions of the pyramids are wholly unsuited for being used for grain storage. Yeah, that's why I ain't never hear that. There may be no mystery in Egypt bigger than the Serapium of Saqqara. That's the name given to a collection of 24 jet black 100 ton granite boxes hidden on a hillside to the south of Giza's Great Pyramid. Uh -huh. The gargantuan sarcophagi appear to have been interred in their current position somewhere around 3,300 years ago, during a time when the legendary pharaoh Ramesses II was on Egypt's throne. Some of the boxes have been opened and found to contain the remains of Apis bulls. Bulls hmm. were sacred to the ancient Egyptians, but they wouldn't usually be buried with such honors. No. One of the most controversial theories about their design and purpose is that they were used for fermentation, which would have generated sufficient stress within the sarcophagi to create a luminous glow inside the dark tunnels. In other words, they might have been a primitive but astonishing form of lighting. The majority of Egyptologists reject this idea out of hand, but they don't have any better explanations of their own. Hmm. If the ancient Egyptians were capable of creating a lighting system from the gases of decaying bulls, they were even more astonishing than we already thought they were. More advanced than y'all thought they were. I don't doubt them. It's a commonly held theory that there was once a fourth pyramid on the Giza Plateau. Hmm. No archaeological evidence of this supposed fourth pyramid could be found for a very long time, but perhaps this mysterious staircase is the first sign of it. The staircase plunges down into the floor of the desert and might once have been in the missing pyramid's basement. It's an impressive feat of engineering. The staircase leads straight down through several feet of limestone and leads to a hidden underworld below the plateau that was unknown until 2018. You couldn't pay me enough to go in there. Access to the plateau is strictly limited because the staircase is on land owned by the military. But a few... If the military owns it, it's because there's something lucky there. Lucky archaeologists have managed to gain supervised entry. Hmm. Amazingly, the lowest point is a full 125 feet beneath the ground and is full of water. Hmm. The underground area is full of carefully carved niches in which black basalt and granite sarcophagi are installed. The sarcophagi are open, so someone has obviously raided these tombs in the distant past. The ancient writer Herodotus once spoke of Egyptian priests creating underground chambers during the building of Memphis, and it appears that the practice occurred in Giza too. It's like there's a whole secret city beneath the plateau. Well, for what purpose, though? Subscribe to the channel. All right, man. That was an interesting, interesting video, man. I would like to learn more, more stuff about the um the pyramids, but more supernatural, scary type of stuff. So if you guys want me to do videos like that, let me know in the comments. I will be doing more videos on other things, learning about things that things in the world that we know about, but we really don't know the details and the history and the theories behind them. So I'm open to checking out different things other than you know the pyramid so if y'all got any suggestions i'm open to suggestions and if you enjoy these type of reactions let me know in the comments i will be doing more it's your boy dollars i'm a holla i'm out of here for my time goes by they gon' raise a nigga jersey in the sky treat a nigga right big dreaming all my life sure they wanna get some air i go and get up when i fly taking off when these niggas i retire the minute i catch fire i smoked them all before just revisiting the high